Hi everyone, you've probably heard of Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. Since it was published in 1916, it's revolutionised our idea and our knowledge of gravity. It's given such incredible things as time dilation near large masses and that light can bend by objects like the sun or by black holes or by really dense stars. There are a lot of things in general relativity that we still haven't observed and we still haven't explained yet. And one of these is a thing called gravitational waves. One of the predictions from general relativity is a before unknown type of radiation in the universe, something called gravitational energy, which is released by gravitational waves. Now what these do is these are waves that travel through space, like light or like sound going through air. But what they do is they tend to squash and to stretch areas of space. Now, you might think these are very rare because you've never noticed anything randomly stretching and squashing in space, but actually trillions and infinite amount of these waves are traveling through you this very second. You see, gravitational waves are created by anything that's accelerated. This can be due to you driving your car down the road, a supernova going off in a distant galaxy, or just you waving your hand backwards and forwards. As your hand moves like this, it's accelerating backwards and forwards as it's changing direction, and this is creating really small gravitational waves. Now, gravitational waves are kind of like light, that they're a wave that travels through space. But unlike light, we can't see them with our eyes or with conventional telescopes. When talking about gravitational waves cause things to stretch and to squash, what does this mean? Well, here we have these dots on the board. Now, if a gravitational wave passes into or out of the board, what happens is these dots begin to stretch and squash in horizontal and vertical dimensions. And as you keep going through these, we begin to stretch and squash and change the dimensions of the actual setup here we have here. Even incredibly, this is happening to you as well. As gravitational waves pass through you, you are also being stretched and squashed by these gravitational waves. But how can this be? If there are loads of sources of gravitational waves around us, cars moving, people moving, why don't we feel ourselves being stretched and squashed all the time by gravitational waves around us? Well, it turns out that gravitational waves are incredibly small. And let's take an example of this. Let's say you have a light bulb in the center of a room. Now this light bulb can fill the entire room up with light and it can let anybody see inside the room and it's incredibly bright for such a small object. Now let's get the light bulb on a piece of string and swing it around our heads. The gravitational waves created from this light bulb are incredibly small. They're much, much smaller than the width of an atom, which means you or me are never going to be able to detect these gravitational waves because they're so small. In fact, it's even hard for detectors to detect how small these gravitational waves are. However, there are some massive objects in the universe that do create gravitational waves that we would be able to feel if they were passing through you. You would actually feel yourself being stretched and squashed. These are massive objects like black holes that collide together or neutron stars that spin around each other. And as I said, if you were close to one of these, you would actually feel yourself being stretched and squashed. You'd probably be torn apart by the whole thing. However, there aren't actually many occurrences of these things. There aren't many black holes colliding or neutron stars going around each other. So the chances that any of them are nearby are extremely low. And that's why there aren't any gravitational waves near us that we can actually feel ourselves. We wouldn't feel ourselves being stretched because there aren't any close by to ourselves. Also, gravitational waves tend to get a lot weaker as they travel through space. They tend to fall off by the amount of distance they have to travel. So that means they're very, very far away, although the big gravitational waves are close to where the source is. By the time to get to us, they're really small and you can't actually feel anything. But if they're so small, why are they so important? So Andrew, you're a PhD student, so what work do you do? Uh, I'm working in gravitational waves, um, and here at Cardiff, part of the work that we do is to uh, try and become part of the team that makes the first direct detection of gravitational waves, which we hope to do in the, in the coming years. And my work actually focuses on um, trying to make detections at the same time as we see something called a gamma ray burst. Um, there's good reason to believe uh, that the, the kind of events that give uh, rise to some of these gamma ray bursts could also be amongst the most energetic events in terms of gravitational waves as well. So we, we think that they'll be some of the first things that we detect in gravitational waves um, and it could, it could help to give us a lot of really important insight into the physics that happens in gamma ray bursts. So why are gravitational waves important? Well, they, they give us a completely new way of looking at the universe. Um, you know, and for pretty much all of human history, we've only really had electromagnetic waves, particularly visible light, to, to use to learn about space and you know, our place in the universe. And uh, you know, up until maybe a few decades ago, we 
we spread out across the electromagnetic spectrum, but we were still confined to that one type of physical phenomenon. And we started being able to do astronomy with particles, detecting particles coming from space, like neutrinos and cosmic rays and things like that. Um, and you know, this is a different kind of phenomenon as well. Gravitational waves are, are a completely new way of, of investigating what's out there in the universe. So we know that gravitational waves are incredibly important, and we know that Einstein's theory of relativity predicts they do exist. But what evidence do we have that they exist other than this theory? Well, one of the biggest ones is something called the Holst-Taylor binary. And what this is, is it's two stars orbiting around each other, a neutron star and a pulsar star. Now, a pulsar is just a star that releases lots of pulses of energy at regular intervals. And by doing this, we detected some of these pulses were missing, and this is how we detected there was a neutron star orbiting around it because we noticed that as the neutron star passed in front of the pulsar, we're missing some of the pulses of energy. Now we can also detect how far apart these two stars are from each other. And we've been at this for several decades. What we found is when we plot how far apart the stars are, we find that as time has gone on, they've actually got closer and closer together. And there's no reason that the star should do this, or that any object should do this, unless they were somehow losing energy. If objects lose energy, their orbits become smaller and then they come closer and closer together. But how are they losing energy? What's causing it to happen? Well, the only way that we know to do this is through gravitational waves. If both the objects were releasing gravitational waves as they're accelerating around each other, then they would lose energy and they would inspire in towards each other. So this is one of the biggest evidence for gravitational waves, is this holst taylor pulsar binary where the two stars are closing in together as they're losing energy as gravitational waves. But what other ways are we trying to find and to actually de physically detect gravitational waves down here on Earth? Well, currently we, we have uh, a number of detectors around the, around the world which are like laser interferometers. So these things are kind of L shapes um, and the idea is that they're, they're big vacuum tubes going away for many kilometers in an L shape from a corner. And we fire a laser in, split the laser in to two parts of the corners and they go up, one half goes up one arm, one half goes up the other arm and bounces back off some mirrors and basically by using this this, uh, this kind of equipment we could uh, detect the lengths of these two arms of the L changing length by very very tiny amounts and that's exactly the sort of thing you would expect if gravitational wave passed through the earth. Um, so we're trying to actually measure the effect that the gravitational wave has um, by actually you know, warping distances between two distant objects. Um, so there are two uh, in the United States called LIGO. One is in Louisiana and one is in Washington State. There's one in Italy called Virgo and there's also one in Germany called GEO. Um, furthermore, they're building one in Japan at the moment, which should be called TAGRA. And there are potentially plans for one in India as well being part of the LIGO network and together um, all these different groups of people have been kind of working towards the same goal of making detections. So beyond these detectors, are there plans for any other ones in the future? Uh, yeah, there's uh, a kind of tentative plan at the moment for a mission which will be launched in uh, 2034, uh, which will be a space mission called ELISA and this will be I'll have a similar idea, it'll be using interferometry with lasers, um, but that will be in space and the, the scale of the detector will be far larger. Um, and so this will be able to detect uh, gravitational waves that are at lower frequencies. Um, and this, these, these things could be maybe given off by um, large black holes uh, orbiting one another at the centre of galaxies or um, neutron stars. and white dwarfs orbiting around each other and things like that. Um, so that's that's a little ways off, but that's been in the planning for quite some time, and that's uh, been approved funding, so it'll, it'll certainly be happening. But sadly, we haven't detected any gravitational waves yet, despite all the effort in the detectors, though we are pretty sure they do exist, so it's just a matter of time. Once we do get the detection, we'll be able to use gravitational waves in brilliant new science. Thank you very much for watching guys, uh, don't forget to check out the rest of my videos, like and subscribe this one, and leave comments and feedback and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys soon.